Hey guys, Dr. Dex here. Today, do you see that gnat fly in front of your screen? Hey guys, welcome to our YouTube channel. Thanks for coming. We appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button before watching this video. If you haven't, we really appreciate it. Today, I thought I'd talk to you a little bit about basic building codes for decks. Uh, we just finished up this front porch project and we had it all permitted. And there's some things that you should know if you're gonna build a deck. First of all, if you're building anything over 30 inches tall, it requires a permit. I don't care what anybody has told you in any part of the nation. If you're over 30 inches tall off the ground, you're gonna need a permit for that deck. And in certain jurisdictions, regardless of the height, if you're connected to the house, you're gonna need a permit anyways. So in certain jurisdictions where I live, if I wanna build a deck 12 inches off the ground, but it's connected to the house, I've had certain jurisdictions say, well, Jason, that's great. We know the IBC says 30 inches, but because we're the city of such and such, and we believe in our supreme power, we're gonna make you get a permit anyways because it's attached to a fire escape and we wanna see what you're building. I'm like, man, really? Okay, so always check with your local building department before building any deck project to see if you require a permit or not. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through this set of permitted plans that were approved from the city that I'm working in right now. And then we'll discuss the requirement, how it might work or might not work for your area where you live. It just depends on a few certain things, okay? The first thing is your footings. Our footings on this particular project, we dug a square hole, but then we put a round topping on top of it, a round topper, uh, because it doesn't say that you have to project the entire footing up out of the ground. But in my plan, it shows the layout for the footings right here, okay? Now these footings are called out right here. It says footings will be 16 inches by 16 inches by 12 inches deep. No rebar required. This is a very small deck. It's not super structural, so we didn't have to put in massive footings. We didn't use helical piles this time. We have an engineer stamp on our plans, okay? So normally what happens is I draw out first what I wanna build. I send that to my engineer and then he'll tell me, yeah, you're good or no, you gotta do this, this and this, make these amendments and then I'll stamp your drawings. Some engineers will do that, some engineers will not. They want it built the way they want it built. My guy knows my style of build, so he's been to several of my job sites. He knows the type of builder I am. He's never seen anything shoddy in those 20 years, so he's pretty cool with me sending him. He knows what I'm gonna build. When, I'm, when I draw it, he knows exactly what I'm doing. If he has any questions, he'll either call me or send me an email and say, hey, what about this, this, and this? Sometimes I have typos, I was like, oh yeah, I forgot to add that. Anyway, for a building code basic, you need to know what size footing you need. Your local building department might be able to help you with that, or possibly not. It just depends. You might have to hire an engineer if you don't know how to size your footings, okay? So that's number one, getting your footing sizes figured out and identified. Since we're on this framing page of this permit, let's talk about structure. Along with the footings, you need to know how you're gonna support the deck because it needs structure, not only from the ground all the way up to the final decking materials. So you're gonna to have to know your sizes of your posts and your beams. Those are identified all in my plan for the building department to let them know, hey, this is what I'm gonna build. Now for this section of the deck here, which is over there, it's covered in RAM board right now. That deck was so low to the ground, they they really didn't, it didn't matter too much what I was building as long as I was building to a certain, to the minimal building code, which would be, you, you can't overspan your joists. The joists have, you have to identify how close together the joists are gonna be or how far apart they're gonna be. You have to identify where your beams need to go and how far apart those are and where your footings are in relation to the beam to make sure that your beam doesn't have too much span in between the footings, okay? It sounds like a lot, and at first it probably is a little overwhelming, but eventually it's not that difficult and I think you'll totally get it. So what we did was we ended up using a precast footing block, which I think I have one right around the corner. We'll go look at it in a second. In various locations where we just dug them down into the ground and then we put an adjustable saddle on those because this deck was only 10 inches off the ground. Some places only seven inches off the ground. So the building department was cool with that because they realized, okay, if this deck collapsed, nobody gonna get hurt on it. If it's a high deck off the ground, 
then they want to make sure that you're using all the proper hardware and the proper products and the proper size members so that that deck won't collapse. So let's go take a look at that footing. Okay, so this is an oversized footing. It's 18 inches round. Uh, there's only one place where I know I can get these. They are hard to find, so sorry if you can't find these in your local jurisdiction. They work much better than a standard 12 inch by 12 inch footing block. This is an adjustable saddle. It goes inside this hole, which is full of concrete, so that's why we didn't use it. We have to drill it out if we want to use it. And then you can adjust this nut up and down with this washer on it, and it raises and lowers the elevation of this right here. If you're concerned about uplift, you'd want to epoxy this into the hole after you figure out your elevation. But usually I'm using these only in low to ground projects where I don't have to worry about uplift, And but I've wanted something that'll hold a lot of weight. The thing, reason I like these footing blocks is because they're bigger. So they hold more weight pushing down on them than a standard like 12 inch by 12 inch footing block would from Home Depot. So now that we've talked about footings, we've talked a little bit about structure. So there's my plan. So now this is the overhead or the plan view. Okay. So when you're doing a permit, you have to do more than a plan view. You got to show the front view, the side view, and any other information that's pertinent to getting this permit approved. Okay, so here's the front view of what we're gonna build. Originally, I was designing the rails in white with black pickets. Clients chose black rails with black pickets. I'm all in, I thought, hey, okay, let's do it. We wrapped a bunch of posts and things like that, but that's all cosmetic, so that doesn't really matter. What matters to the building department is the structure. They wanna know, what kind of brackets you're using and where and why. So here's again, another footnote. Deck footings will be either 16 inches by 16 inches by 12 inches deep or precast 18 inch round concrete. And I kind of identified where those are going. I told them I'm gonna put a Simpson ML24Z in certain locations for a positive connection from my post to beam. That's another thing you guys need to think about when you're frame. Most of the reasons for building code they're gonna check mostly are your frame and your structure. And then upon final inspection, they're gonna ch check and make sure for safety, that your railings are safe, that there's no more than a four inch gap anywhere on the rail system, that you can withstand 200 pounds of force. So there's the structure of the railing as well, but mostly it's just to make sure the deck's complete and nobody's gonna take a digger off the outside of the deck and crack the noggin open on your watch, okay? We don't want that. So that's why there's a building department to begin with, to make sure that you're not building something crazy. Let's say I wanna build a space needle in my backyard, probably ain't gonna happen. Along the way, so then we have, uh, we're, we're also identifying the rim joists, that this is an existing deck, and I, in post, and I've identified in the list what the sizes are of that. So then the next page is the side view. And on this, particular side view, I chose to go to view the deck from this direction, like from back here this way. And that's what I drew on my computer. And again, I'm listing out the type of railing, uh, staircase connections, what type of fasteners am I using to attach one thing to another? Uh, what type of railing am I using? That's all in here. I, I have to describe, it has to be at least 36 inches high off the deck. That's another minimal code requirement. If you have to have hand railing, the top rail has to be at least 36 inches or higher. In certain jurisdictions, it has to be 42, and commercial has to be 42 inches high off the top of the deck. If you're below that, you can get nailed and have to redo all your railing if it's too low. Lower staircase connection. Fastened to decking and landing with Simpson ML24Zs and two and a half inch SDS legs. So again, I kind of, my engineer gets frustrated with me because he's like, why are you repeating this call out on these plans? Because I've actually had plans rejected because the plans inspector didn't see where I called out for something and it was on one page only. So sometimes I double up or triple up. From now on, my engineer's like, just call it out once. I don't like seeing it three times. I'm like, okay. Probably one of the most important things that you can do when you're building your deck is your house attachment detail. And I have to tell the building department how I'm going to attach anything to the side of a house. It's very important. Uh, we use a lot of Fasten Master Ledger Lock fasteners. We use Simpson Strong Tie Z Max joist hangers, and we always flash everything out. So it's calls out over here, Simpson LUS 28Z attached to every joist. Here's a two by eight pressure treated ledger board. That's typical. What typical means is it's throughout the project. 
it's not just for this one spot. It's going to be anywhere we hang a uh, ledger. It's going to be two by eight. Uh, some galvanized Z flashing and Vicor deck protector above the ledger board. Um, that should probably say G tape because we we don't really use Vicor anymore, uh, but mostly G tape. So this is probably an older drawing that I need to update. Uh, and then here's a very important part. The way you, you install the Fasten Master ledger locks to the ledger can depend on the tributary weight of the load that the deck is handling from the house. I'm not a mathematician, so I just have my engineer figure that stuff out and tell me you need to space these so many inches apart, staggered. That satisfies my requirement. And he'll put a stamp on it, which is right there. All right, so here we are on this back project that we're working on now. And this deck was already framed by somebody else. So a couple things I can point out to you that I like and a couple things that are okay. Uh, they satisfy the code, but could have been better. So these are six by six posts. These are great. They're on a substantial footing because these posts shoot all the way through the existing deck and all the way up to the very top of the roof. This house has a cantilevered roof that is being supported by posts and beams. So six by six posts. Now these six by eight beams, maybe back when this deck was built were acceptable, but they, they're they spanning like 14 feet. That I don't think that'll pass code nowadays. Um, I don't know how they got away with that, but I wasn't going to start tearing things down and putting in larger beams. I went ahead and went with it because there's not a lot of bounce in them. I kind of went up there and checked it, but I think they're maxed out for span. So if it was me, I would have either used a six by 10 or a six by 12, or maybe a laminated beam instead to carry the load of these deck joists. Another thing over here, you have to have a certain amount of fasteners. This deck does not have any Fasten Master fasteners, but it has half inch legs staggered every 24 inches. So I'm sure back in the day when this deck was built, that was acceptable to the code. The one thing I don't like about this is they use two by eight joists, but they use the two by six joist hanger. That is acceptable uh, to code, that you can use a two by six joist hanger on a two by eight but I just think a two by eight hanger on a two by eight looks a little more robust. Uh, it, it has a little bit cleaner look in my opinion, and I just like the way uh, it looks better. So if it was me, I would have put a bigger joist hanger on those joists, but I'll do me and you do you. That's what this is all about, guys. All right, so if you learn something about minimal deck code requirements, click that subscribe button or leave a comment below if you have any questions. Thanks for watching, have a great day.